Good morning, everyone, and uh, a happy Mother's Day to those of you um, who mother in any way, whether um, it is your own babies or the babies of others or um, babies with four legs or uh, just caring for people's children in your midst. Um, I think that, that that is the best way to celebrate and to honor a day such as this. Uh, a few announcements. We um, remain uh, steadfast in our um, virtual worship experience. Um, we do have teams working and beginning to think through the process of uh, returning, but we um, will only do that when um, state and local and medical and church leadership officials um, all give us the go ahead. So know that it's on all of our hearts and minds, um, but that we are trying to remain faithful in, oh, in the midst of all of this. Um, we also uh, have um, a new list of needs from the um, women and children's shelter that is located in Tecumseh and kind of housed at Herrick Hospital. Um, we'll be posting that to our social media probably and emailing out those needs um, early this coming week. If you're able to add a couple of extra things to those grocery um, store pickups that you are doing safely from a good distance away. Uh, I know that um, our neighbors right here in our midst would be grateful. And again, then if um, you have a need or if you are aware of a need, whether it's neighbor or family member or um, something else in our midst, then I ask you to uh, make us here at the church aware of that. Make myself or um, Jeff Bramer, our council president, aware. Um, and we'll do what we can to meet those needs. Um, finally, I just want to thank all of you who have responded so far to our um, ask that if you're able to um, increase your giving a little or um, to give us, to give the church rather, um, part of your stimulus check, uh, we are tithing that to our community resource fund, which is how um, I am confidently able to say we can meet needs in and around our community. Um, but thank you to those of you who have already given, to those of you who continue to give. Um, this is making our planning for ministry in the future um, easier and more faithful. Uh, with this, I invite you to... Um, Take a moment and let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning. Please join me in our uh, Thanksgiving for baptism. We're having a few technical difficulties with the slides. It's no worries, this happens often. Uh, to lots of other folks, and it's our turn this week, and that's fine. So we're going to go back one slide when we can get there. Can you see this now? Um, yes, I can see it. Can somebody else give me a thumbs up if you can see it? Okay, so we can see it. Um, I'm having a hard time moving backwards. Okay, that's fine. I have that. Here we go. Thanksgiving for baptism. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Join to Christ in the waters of baptism. We are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of our baptisms. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. 
We praise you for your salvation through water, for water in the fonts in all churches and sacred spaces, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Join me, please, in praying our prayer of the day. Let us pray. O oh God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Okay, so we're going to just look at one another for the rest of worship. This is fine, right? Our screen has gone down in the past and we know uh, how to do this. So let's um, close the screen sharing. And um, Judy Stewie was graciously going to read for us, but I know she was going to use the words on the screen. So Judy, I'm going to read this week and I will let you read next week, okay? Good, very good. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Acts, uh, which, small plug, uh, you're still able to join our Bible studies on Tuesdays at noon or Wednesdays at seven. Uh, and this reading um, is from Acts chapter seven. Stephen was one of the seven men chosen by the apostles to serve tables so that the apostles could be free to serve the word. But Stephen does more than distribute food. For his preaching of God's word, he actually becomes the first martyr of the faith. And this morning we hear from Acts chapter 7. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, Stephen said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then, then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of the young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. A word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See, do we have the screen back? Great. Please, please listen as I read Psalm 31, verses 1 through 5 and 15 through 16. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. 
make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me, for you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit, for you have redeemed me, O Lord, God of truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. And our second reading is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. Christ is the cornerstone of God's saving work and the foundation of our lives. We are God's chosen holy people who continuously celebrate and declare the mercy of God we experience through Jesus Christ. Peter writes, like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe he is precious, but for those who do not believe, The stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel this evening is from the gospel according to John. On the night that he is arrested, Jesus shares his final words with his disciples. As the one through whom God is known, he promises to go before them and act on their behalf. Jesus said to the disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Now Thomas, one of his disciples, said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip, another disciple, said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. 
Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Now, normally uh, I do a children's sermon, but this morning we're kind of going to have a bit more of a, of a family style sermon, if you will, for those of you still on Zoom or on Facebook or watching this later. You'll notice maybe that I am. Uh, in a different spot. I'm actually in my living room this morning, and that's because I'm going to be reading a book for us at some point in a little, little bit. And um, the virtual screens that I like to use to make it look like I am in church uh, wouldn't allow the pages to appear. Uh, so you get to see a bit more of our, of our space here. But this gospel text, brothers and sisters, has, has given me, as I like to say, all the feels this week. Because, because my heart is really troubled at this point. And so as I've read this text, I have, I have cried and then I have laughed at the timing of it all. I have been a little angry that this is what I'm supposed to draw good news from and, and have truthfully wrestled long and hard with these pretty familiar words to me from Jesus. So I did some writing, um, sort of a journal style writing earlier in the week that I had no original intention of sharing with you. But the spirit, she is a funny thing. And so here we are. My heart is troubled, Jesus. You say, do not let my heart be troubled, and yet my heart is troubled, Jesus. My heart is troubled that it has been nine long weeks since I have been in worship at 108 Brown Street with so many of your beloveds way back on what was the second Sunday of Lent, and here we are, the fifth week of Easter. My heart is troubled that science and truthful leaders from the medical field and our church leadership also indicates that when we can return to worship in person, it will look different, and I have no idea what that means. My heart is troubled, Jesus. My heart is troubled that others seem to be living pretty selfishly, demanding that their rights mean more than another's. My heart is troubled that we seem to have to find this balance between wellness and wealth in our world, and that there are so many who will be caught up in the battle still. It's breaking my heart to see so much indifference between neighbors and so much rage at what feels like just inconveniences to me, all so that others can simply have life abundantly like you've promised. My heart is troubled, Jesus, for, for Ahmad Arbery and the, the mirror that his death is holding up, yet Again, 
the mirror that his death is holding up yet again about the sin of racism that that we carry within us. My heart is troubled that our black and brown brothers and sisters live in fear in some ways that I can never know. My heart is troubled that we still have work to do. And I know for many of us, that feels uncomfortable at best. Jesus, my heart is troubled. My heart is troubled that these words of yours, which, which I find comforting and full of hope so often, particularly at funerals when I normally am preaching on this text, have these words though have actually made my heart feel troubled. How can these words of yours bring peace to my troubled heart? Or perhaps what I'm trying to say a bit more honestly is, what if these words don't bring me peace this week? What if right now my heart is just troubled? I've told you all before, brothers and sisters, that I believe in relying on and continuing to learn from voices around me that are that are smarter and wiser and kinder whenever possible. And so for a moment, we're gonna lean into the wise and kind and true words of Patrice Karst and her book, The Invisible String. This is written to the children of the world and the magic of their strings. And I will get better at showing you pictures. Liza and Jeremy, the twins, were asleep one calm and quiet night. Suddenly, began to rain very hard. Thunder rumbled until it got so loud that it woke them up. Mommy, mommy, they cried as they ran out to her. Don't worry, you two. It's just the storm making all that noise. Go back to bed. We want to stay close to you, Jeremy said. We're scared. And mom said, you know, we're always together no matter what. But how can we be together when you're out here and we are in bed? Asked Liza. Mom held something right in front of them and said, this is how. Rubbing their sleepy eyes, the twins came closer to see what mom was holding. I was about your age when my mommy first told me about the invisible string. I don't see a string, said Jeremy. Oh, you don't need to see the invisible string. People who love each other are always connected by a very special string made of love. But if you can't see it, how do you know it's there? Asked Liza. Even though you can't see it with your eyes, you can feel it with your heart and know that you are always connected to everyone you love. When you're at school and you miss me, your love travels all the way along the string until I feel it tug on my heart. And when you tug it right back, we feel it in our hearts, said Jeremy.
Does Jasper the cat have an invisible string? Liza asked. She sure does, said mom. And best friends like me and Lucy? Asked Liza. Best friends too. Well, how far can the string reach? Anywhere and everywhere, mom said. Would it reach me even if I were a submarine captain deep in the ocean, asked Jeremy. Yes, said mom, even there. Or a mountain climber, asked Liza, even there. What if I was a ballerina in France, even there? or a jungle explorer, even there. How about an astronaut in outer space? Even there, said mom. Then Jeremy quietly asked, can my string reach all the way to Uncle Brian in heaven? Oh yes, even there. Does the string go away when you're mad at us? Never, said mom. Love is stronger than anger. And as long as love is in your heart, the string will always be there. Even when you get older and can't seem to agree about anything, like what movie to see or what game to play in the back seat of the car. Or what time to go to bed. Oh, that's right. You two should be in bed. And with that, they all laughed as mom chased the twins back to their beds. Within a few minutes, they were asleep, even though the storm was still making the same loud noises outside. As they slept, they started dreaming of all the invisible strings they have and all the strings their friends have and their friends have and their friends have until everyone in the world was connected by invisible strings. And from deep inside, they now could clearly see no one is ever alone. The book always makes my heart feel a little less troubled. I'm grateful that we have a God who gives the gifts of words and illustrations to others so that they can bring comfort and peace when we can't find it ourselves. I'm grateful that we have a God who uses everything, even children's books, to show us the way. We may still feel like our buddy, that disciple, Thomas. Uh, Jesus, where are you going? How are we supposed to know the way? Except I think our response right now feels a little bit more like, this is unprecedented. What do we do tomorrow or next month? And what will all of this mean when we can come back together? How will our lives change individually and as a community and even as a world? But we can feel like Thomas. 
with troubled hearts and lots of wonderings because Jesus's words are not so much a command as they are a promise. We are invited into the deepest form of relationship in our baptisms, relationship with the divine, with the holy, and that string of love, just like the invisible one for Liza and Jeremy, that string connects us to everyone, whether we are worshiping together in the same space or social distancing correctly, or even confessing our sins with troubled hearts. We are connected. We are connected to Jesus, our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, our advocate, and the one who creates and forms all things. And we are connected to each other. In times when our hearts are troubled and in times when we are worry-free, in times of forgiveness and in times of hope. Brothers and sisters, my prayer for for you and for us this week is quite simple. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Remember that we are already connected to the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Please join me in professing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, even though we are apart, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are going to stop the screen share and I invite you to click on gallery view if you're able. We're gonna unmute everyone. Mm -hmm. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. you. Let's share Christ's peace with one another. Peace, everybody. Peace, Mother's Day to all. Peace, stands. Peace. Good to see you. Peace Watsons and Thompsons and Poises and Framers of all sorts. Framers <laughs> <laughs> of all sorts. <laughs> Barks. And peace Joanne and Norma and those of you on the phone. Peace to all. Peace. God's peace. God's peace. <laughs> peace be with y'all. Pretty quiet. Good job. Peace. 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 Peace.
to sing. Is that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And a reminder uh, that you are um, you are muted. So sing loudly um, with this familiar hymn, and we are going to give thanks that Kate Dan played the the music, um, and we will sing. If Sarah, can you go back one? I realize I missed the blessing. I apologize. <laughs> We all need this blessing this week, don't we? May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise us, raise you to new life. Fill you with hope and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Let's sing out loud. I know that my Redeemer lives. is risen just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Blessings on your week and we'll see you next Sunday.